All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to give you an example of a non-diagonalizable matrix. Ooh, fancy. So a matrix which cannot be written of the form A equals to PDP inverse. And in fact, the example is simply the matrix 1, 1, 0, 1. And let me show you at least heuristically why you cannot diagonalize this. So first let's find the eigenvectors. So let's find, you know, I'm sorry, first let's find the eigenvalues. So let's find the determinant of lambda i minus a, which is the determinant of lambda minus 1 and minus 1, 0, lambda minus 1, which gives you lambda minus 1 squared, and that's 0, and that gives you lambda equals 1. Be careful. So, just because there's one eigenvalue, it doesn't mean that it's not diagonalizable. For example, the identity matrix also only has just one eigenvalue, but this one is diagonalizable. So, because uh, it is diagonal, so just by definition. So, the point is to determine whether a matrix is diagonalizable or not, you really have to look at the eigenvectors. And just one little remark, so uh, notice this eigenvalue has multiplicity 2 because it's, you know, a, a root of something squared. We call this the algebraic multiplicity. Algebraic multiplicity. And here the algebraic multiplicity is 2 because it's root of a square here. On the other hand, let's really look at the eigenvectors. So let's look at the null space of 1i minus a. So null space of i minus a, which is the null space of, you just said lambda equals to 1 here. So 0 minus 1, 0, 0, which is just the null space of 0, 0, 1, 0. Now, what is this? Again, I feel null spaces are not so trivial to deal with, but um, let's just multiply 0, 1, 0, 0 by x, y equals 0, 0. Then you just get y equals 0. And so your vector x, y is just x, 0. And that's the span of 1, 0. See, in particular, uh, notice this matrix only has one eigenvector. In other words, it has uh, the basis for the eigenspace is just one dimensional. So now of i minus a is just the span of one thing. And this is just only one eigenvector. In other words, in terms of multiplicity, this is called the geometric multiplicity. So here the geometric multiplicity is equal to one. And this is a big problem because, well, what does it mean to be diagonalizable? You would have to find P and D, such that A is PDP inverse, well, D, the only choice you really have is 1, 0, 0, 1. But then the question is, what do you put for P? Well, for P, you have 1, 0, because that's one eigenvector. But then, you don't really have any other choices. You can't put 2, 0, because then P wouldn't be invertible. And in fact, notice if D is the, uh, D is the matrix with ones on the diagonal, it's the identity matrix. So A would have to be PIP inverse, which is PP inverse, which is the identity. So in this case, if A were diagonalizable with D being this matrix, then it would have to be the identity. So in particular, turns out this matrix is not diagonalizable. So you cannot put it, you 
cannot put it of the form A equals to PDP inverse. And this is basically a proof because basically if, uh, um, if you can write this, you can show that, well, D has to be the matrix of eigenvalues, P has to be the matrix of eigenvectors, but there's no way to get a matrix with linearly independent columns if the eigenspace is just one dimensional. So, maybe to summarize, so I know lots of books, they spent 20 pages on that, but here's the thing. When is the matrix not diagonalizable? So fact, if there are not enough eigenvectors, enough eigenvectors, just like here. In other words, if, if the uh, geometric multiplicity is not equal to the algebraic multiplicity, then A is not diagonalizable. Analyzable. And in fact, it's sort of an if and only if statement. A is diagonalizable if and only if there are enough eigenvectors. So here, for a two by two matrix, if you find basically two linearly independent eigenvectors, then you're done. And in particular, there's a nice special case if there are n different eigenvalues. then it is diagonalizable. And n is just the size of a, so a is diagonalizable. Let me explain you why this is true, and it should be kind of neat, okay? Suppose a is a two by two matrix, looks like this, two by two, and suppose you find the eigenvalues are two and three. So two different eigenvalues, then look, by definition of an eigenvalue, there should be an eigenvector v here, corresponding to 2, and another eigenvector w here, corresponding to 3. And in particular, there are sort of two different eigenvectors, and you can sort of show, and the proof is neat, that uh, if you take two different eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenvalues, they're linearly independent. I'll make a video on that once I teach my more advanced linear algebra class. And so in particular, if you find here two different eigenvalues, you get two different eigenvectors. So in fact, there would be enough eigenvectors because here you would need two eigenvectors and this is exactly what you get. But careful, even if a matrix just has one eigenvalue, it could still be diagonalizable, like the identity matrix. So this is not an if and only if condition. It's just a sufficient condition to have diagonalizable. But in general, no. In general, you have to look at all the eigenvectors. And heuristically speaking, if there are not enough of them, then it's not a diagonalizable. And yes, that's all I wanted to talk about today. If you like this and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.